Oh, excuse me. Do an audio check? Yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. Back again in for another episode of PK's Lab, talking about the rapid fire. Um, guess the series never ends, right? <laughs> so it's something else to mess with like, and get nerdy. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, calibration and why it's kind of important to use the same antenna on both the top and bottom uh, inputs when you're calibrating it. So let's switch to the other side of the camera and take a look at what we got set up on the bench. Boop. Okay, so uh, just like the previous video, which was part two, kind of into the magic sauce of the rapid fire, uh, very similar setup, actually the same setup, basically um, minus the rapid fire module is not inside the goggles just because it's a little easier to get at one of the signals. So again, got the Fox Rear Falcor camera going into our signal generator, into a power divider, electronically controlled variable attenuators, into our rapid fire, and we're looking at the different channels. So the each the video output from the upper receive channel, the lower receive channel, and then the combined output. So that's, that's channel two, three, and four, and channel one is the input to the signal generator from the camera. Our reference plane, again, is right at the front of the module, so basically the signal level that's displayed on the signal generator will be the value that shows up here at the ports, and then to determine what the actual level is with this variable attenuator, in, in, you have to add or subtract the amount of attenuation here from that number to get the real signal level there. So let's take a look. Um, again, Valcor and the signal generator. There's the minus 50 dBm. Comes down through the blue cable into the power divider up there. Variable attenuator here. Two cables come up into our rapid fire module. And I'm doing something a little different uh, than the last video. I've got the camera. Um, on a monitor back there just because it's a little easier for me to see what's going on. And you'll see we've got things uh, just like the last time tapped out, the three video streams, but I've also got an extra wire on there. Um, let's see if that'll focus right there. So the, the fourth pin over. Um, that looks like the diversity select line. So whichever an antenna is active, that will show up there. Um, and I've got a little schematic here that uh, Shows you what the pinout that I did, just probing around and seeing what the different things the module's doing. Uh, that's what I think is what's going on. So we are probing oops, number four, active antenna. And we've got that displayed on the oscilloscope up here. And you can see, again, the first channel is the output from the Falcor camera. Uh, receive channel one, receive channel two, and then the combined output. And we've got this digital line here that's going to represent which antenna port is active. So when the line's high, it'll be the green one. When the line's low, it'll be the blue one. So that's our setup, and let's uh, let's cal things up and see what we get. Okie dokie. So let's cal up our module. Do do do. Oops, be in the right menu. Calibration. Come over here, turn our signal generator off. Turn it back on. Again, we're at minus 50 dBm. There's no attenuator clicked in, or no attenuation clicked in in the, in the variable attenuator. So let it do its thing. Um, and for what it's worth, I probed the analog RSSI lines coming out of the rapid fire module. Um, that's also on that uh, hand drawing that I did in the previous section. Um, and it's like minus 45 to 50 dBm is where that uh, RSSI line peaks out. Um, and it's like right around 2 volts is what the peak value is. So there we go. Calibration succeeded. And we're going to run this in legacy mode. If I can get it to get its button gear. All right, make sure we're still in legacy mode. All right. Um, and the reason we're doing it in legacy is it's a little bit easier to see it switching back and forth because of the way it's doing it. 
So, all right, it's probably a little hard to see, but on the screen you can see a little bit of flicker in the white level as it's switching back and forth between the modules. And over here on the oscilloscope, you can kind of see the that thin red trace, the digital trace, blopping back and forth. So I'm going to come over here to this window that says GUI key press. Um, that's the one that lets me manually adjust the attenuation of the electronic attenuator. So you watch here and then watch here. Um, as I step it down, you can see each time I click it, it increases its attenuation. So now path one is at 10 dB of attenuation. And so the red line is low, indicating that the second path is active. And so I'm going to start attenuating the second path. And you can see it clicked high right as we went to 11 dB. So I'll go back to 10, it's low, 11 is high. All right, so we can see it picking the path that's the strongest. So that's a pretty simple example, and it'll do this, again, because we're in legacy mode, it'll do this anywhere in the, the range that it works across. So, cool. All right, so now let's say what happens if we have two different antennas on our rapid fire module when we calibrate things up. And this is, there's a little bit of an assumption here. So the, basically the, the distance you are from your video transmitter when you calibrate is important. Um, but it's an only important if you're not fully saturating the RSSI coming out of the module. So basically you don't want to be 15 feet away in Cal, like you want to be right up on it, otherwise this will happen. So basically what we're going to simulate is uh, the second path is going to be no attenuation and then the first path will put 15 dB. Now this is kind of worst case um, in what you'd see in the real world because it's saying that you've got like a real high gain antenna on the bottom connection and then basically an omni on the top. So we're, we're trying to exasperate the problem just to show this example. But all right, we're going to cal just like this. Turn our off. On. All right. So let's go back into where we were. So just like uh, so now we can see that the switchover point is the delta between the two. So the reason this is not advantageous to Cal like this is because the actual signal strength going into our two modules um, is not equal. You really want that switchover point to be when the energy, RF energy going into the receiver, the module, should be the, the thing determining uh, when to switch. So let's, let's show a good example of when this is bad. So we know from our previous measurements, the sensitivity of this module is kind of around minus 96, 97, 98 dBm, depending on the attenuation setting. So you can see right there, when they're equal, he's toggling back and forth between them. I bring the second path up to where he has a clear advantage and it's still having trouble deciding which path it wants to go with um, until that second path is significantly stronger in this case 8 db stronger i'm sorry i can't math 12 db stronger <laughs> so uh yeah so that's that's kind of not good um, so that previous example was kind of contrived because the path losses were the same or were, were fixed throughout that whole calibration process. So basically um, it's like you weren't moving at all, which doesn't really happen in real life. That whole progress bar moving over gives you time to 
uh, move your module around to let it exercise the full range of RSSIs to do the calibration properly. So if we do that, and what we're going to do here is we got this second window down here, so GUI indefinite handover. And basically that I've got both attenuators that I can set a step size and then a starting and ending attenuation value. And when I click start, you can see the attenuators slide back and forth. And then you can see the numbers kind of move back and forth. So let's call it by providing one of these variable signals. And hopefully, if everything works correctly, uh, that kind of set point, that it, the switchover point, will be equal on both receive paths. So let's do it. RF off. RF is on. Over here to the start button to prep it. All right, so hopefully that simulated moving your goggles around in a bunch of different orientations to kind of peak up the RSSI of both of the modules. So let's see how we did. All right, get out of the menus. Interesting. So maybe we have to move it slower. Nope, maybe not. That was just me being a little overzealous. So this is a little bit of error. Let's find it, see if we can find a different spot. Yeah, so there's a couple of dB of difference. All right, so let's redo that same test, but move this, change the interval up to something a little bit longer. So maybe we were just, the RSSI was changing too quickly. So let's see what that looks like. Hopefully that's fast enough. Actually, maybe we'll do. There, how's that look? That seems real world, right? All right. <laughs> We're very scientific here at PK's lab. Um, all right. Same deal. Calibration RF off. Yoink. RF on. Looks like we got a couple cycles in here. All right, let's see how do we do. How do we do, big? Interesting. Good. So it looks pretty close to being on. Maybe a dB or two difference, but nothing crazy to write home. So if you've got a rapid fire module and you're calibrating it and you've got two different antennas on it, make sure you do, you know, like a rotate it around. And so it gets kind of gets both antennas get hit with the maximum amount of energy to peak out the RSSI. Um, don't stand crazy far away from your VTX because um, then you basically want the analog RSSI line to, to hit that full two volts um, so that it knows where the peaks are. All right. I'm sure we'll come up with some other kind of cool things to look at in the rapid fire module. Um, and again, let's see, I'll go back to the screenshot of the, the pinout in case people are interested. There you go. So that's the module itself. And this pin number, oh, where's my mouse? There we go. That was pin four, which is the active antenna. It's high when the top antenna is selected and low 
when the bottom antenna is selected. And here is the kind of reverse engineered pinout. Again, there's eight pins on the top. I misnumbered. There's only seven on the bottom. Sorry about that. <laughs> I got the pin numbering right here, though. Um, and in case you're interested in probing around and seeing what, what's going on, there's a UART. Um, I didn't fully understand. I didn't see anything interesting on five and six, but they do look like they go somewhere. Um, so maybe somebody else, or maybe they don't. Maybe they're not connects. I don't know. Uh, there's a VIA there, so it's going somewhere on the top board. Um, but anyways, interesting stuff. Uh, more nerding out. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys on the flip for another episode of PK's Lab. Peace.